We have an amazing cast of, of characters here for you today, all from our community. Um, and uh, they've been doing uh, just amazing things with Omniverse. And we were so lucky to have time to get all of these people together in, this, in the same uh, virtual room uh, <laughs> to show us what they're working on uh, with, uh, you know, using USD uh, Composer. And that's uh, formerly known as Create, I believe. It is, uh, we're still transitioning over to the new name and it's still getting used to it. But but um, I I just want to say thank you guys for hanging in there through the technical difficulties. And I'm ready, uh, super excited to get this one started. Um, and I want to say, uh, how many of you in the chat saw Computex with Jensen? Uh, were you just like blown away? Like <laughs> where he shows this giant computer and says, all of that runs on one GPU. Um, if you haven't seen the the copy text, uh, go watch the keynote from that. It is it is mind blowing, uh, what what we're doing here in Nvidia. It's just incredible. Uh, but without you know taking up too much uh, of that time, Edmar, is there anything else we wanted to announce? No, no, no. I think you said it at all. Um, yeah. We, I guess the only one thing is, so we do have a, a nice summary of all the, the news that came out of Computex. If you go to the Omniverse forums, uh, you can see it's under the announcements. Amelia put that together. Uh, really cool. So you can get a breakdown of, of the major things that were announced. But yeah, that was his first key, live keynote in, I think, almost four years. Uh, it was pretty awesome to watch. Congratulations to uh, all the team that helped work to put that together. Um, we actually have a really cool um, uh, URL you can use to access the community website now. So you don't have to remember anything really long or a bunch of clicks. You can go to nvidia.com slash omnivores and that will bring you right to our community page where you can sign up to be an insider which is super helpful guys that lets us know all your different uh, areas of expertise and what apps you're using if you open a contract work we are actively hitting that list uh for for um for feedback and also to match people up with uh with cool promotions we're working on uh, for example right now we would love to talk to people who are using marvelous designer with omniverse so uh go ahead and, and check out the omniverse community page at nvd.com omnivores and uh and fill out the insider application if you haven't already so we can get in touch with you with cool opportunities. Um, but yes, just as Wendy said, uh, we have an amazing, amazing live stream today. I cannot believe we got all these amazing creators uh, here at the same time. This is amazing because each of these folks, uh, if you're a part of our community on Discord and the forums, uh, you'll absolutely recognize Pekka Varis, Omniverse Ambassador for the community. Hello, Pekka, coming in from Finland. Um, and um, Funky Boy, uh, AKA Steven Tong is here. Uh, who's going to be showing off some um, some really cool workflow? Uh, Frank Shang uh, has contributed uh, uh, um, a really cool uh, Lord of the Rings inspired uh, render. So we'll take a look how we did that. And Tanya Langer, who's no stranger to live stream as well, is uh, going to be showing off a really cool scene uh, showing a statue uh, using the uh, Unreal Engine connector and Omniverse. So we have a really fun filled live stream. Uh, before we get started showing each of your workflows, why don't we uh, go around really quick? Uh, we'll start with Pekka. Uh, and te Pekka, tell us, uh, give everyone who might not know you, uh, if they're living under a rock and they have not seen your work or, or seen you on the forums yet, why don't you let everybody know kind of a little bit about your background, your company, what kind of work you're doing? That would be great. Yeah, thanks, Edmar. Uh, I'm Pekka from Finland, Helsinki, and uh, I'm, I'm the ambassador, uh, basically Machinima ambassador. And uh, I've been now working with my company Signshare, uh, Signshare.io, and basically we focus on Revolution character creators and, and trying to make them work perfectly in in Machinima under out of the face on the gesture. And now, of course, new things are coming like the chatbot thing and, and everything <clears throat> around that. But also. Uh, I got a huge opportunity from NVIDIA. Thank you, NVIDIA. Uh, Jamie Allen met a Finnish national broadcast TV I called Freelander, and they they uh, decided that uh, they need something for weather, uh, something cool to do with weather effects on TV. And then uh, NVIDIA uh, dropped that customer to SignShare, and, and now we'll be doing that, and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. And that's the stuff I'm going to show today. But yeah, uh, well, uh, otherwise I'm a 
X cinematographer and now now I do Omniverse and and, and of course other software too. And I live here here in Helsinki with my family. Uh, I have a seven-year-old daughter and uh, uh, I used to play drums a lot, but <laughs> lately I've been working with with the storm clouds. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pekka, and really, really happy to have you here with us. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule, and uh, I'm just sure everybody's really excited to see how you did that that cloud render. Um, uh, next up, we have uh, Tanya Langner, who uh, who actually is her background is industrial uh, industrial design. Uh, and and uh, also brilliant 3D artist. So Tanya, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the kind of work you're doing now? So um, thanks for having me. <laughs> my name is Tanya and um, I'm based in the UK. I live here with my, my little family. And um, I've been working as an industrial designer for 25 years. And um, that's my, my main work. And in the last three years, I have kind of gradually moved towards um, 3D art and um, trying to keep up with you know new technology and eventually came across Omniverse and um, I have been you know just tipping my toes in every now and again when I had time so far you know I just barely scratched the surface but um, whenever there is a challenge I'm very very keen on you know just showing ways of doing it and um, especially to people who might be beginners in Omniverse and um, yeah so I would be more than happy to, to showcase a very simple very simple <laughs> setup and see. No it's awesome I, and I love that you're using the Unreal Engine also uh, connector uh, with Omniverse and uh, really showing how OpenUSD can can work with multiple apps. Well thank you so much for joining today um, and we also have the legendary Funky Boy. Hello, Funky Boy, aka Steven Tong. How are you doing? Hey, I'm Mario. Thanks for having me back. Um, so yeah, I'm Steven, uh, aka Funky Boy. My background has mainly been in music, but in the past few years, I've been exploring like 3D stuff and got into the whole Omniverse stuff maybe just like last year. And I was on the stream with you guys like just three months ago, maybe showing off my Lego workflow. And you can go back and look at that, see how that was done. And uh, today we're going to be showing you how to do a little Zen garden. And hopefully I can show you how to do that like under five minutes and just show you the power of Omniverse and how quickly you can get stuff done. So That's yeah, awesome. thanks. We will drop the uh, that link to the previous live stream you mentioned because that is awesome actually to see. Uh, it's very close to a realistic digital twin of Lego, a real Lego set that he has on his desk. So we'll uh, we'll show how we use that. And he's uh, actually been pretty active and building extensions. So it's really awesome to have you here, Stephen. Thanks for coming on. And uh, last but not least, uh, another legendary community member, Frank Shang, otherwise known as Shang Chi, is joining us. Frank, it is so awesome to have you here. I've wanted to have you on here forever, literally. Uh, you are such a, a positive force in, in the community. As a member of our live streams, really active on our Discord, um, you're always helpful to people, and you always you always you, you accept every single community challenge we've thrown out there. So really ex excited that you're able to join us here today. Um, but you have a you have a really cool background. You are uh, you come from the architectural design world, right? <clears throat> Yeah, my, um, oh, thank you, Amar, for, and Wendy for having me on. Um, I'm based in San Francisco. Um, my background is, is, it has always been in architecture. Um, I work with some really famous architects that mentor me as I got younger in my career, and they taught me a lot of stuff. And you know, I work in detailing. I work in um, how to take uh, someone's design, develop it with all the consultants, add material systems, get it ready, build and also supervise the construction of that project. Um, I use Omniverse when it first used the beta and to use it as part of my process of design. When I'm developing something, it's great to have this software USD allows me to see the design in real life and see the different options. And also to share with the consultants to make everything work. Um, I'm still trying to learn to make it better um, and I'll hopefully to continue to use it in architecture to help others to visually see what they're building. Very cool. And uh, Frank's going to show up actually how he leveraged uh, map capabilities uh, to actually generate the cool really uh, mountain scene we're going to see in, in a few minutes. Uh, so again, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, everybody watching the stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, we encourage you to post any questions to any of the folks here on our panel uh, or to the NVIDIA team. Uh, 
myself, Wendy, or the other video folks that are watching the stream, we'll, we'll try to answer you in the chat. Um, and we will drop links for each of these folks' uh, different social media accounts or websites as they're giving the presentation. So if you want to know how to get in touch with someone, we'll make that super easy uh, to also see their work and, uh, and reach out to them. Um, all right, so let's get this party started. What do you say, Wendy? Yes, I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start with, uh, with Ms. Langner. So, uh, so Tanya, um, you have actually participated in a couple of different community challenges. Um, so really cool to see you jumped on this one also. Uh, what was your inspiration? Uh, and um, yeah, tell, tell us a little about what you're going to show off today. So yes, shall I share my screen? Let's not fall down at the first hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. We will, we will let you know when the screen is visible and we'll start sharing it. Okay, let me move you guys a little bit. It's, uh, it's up. You're good to go. Oh. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> Super. So I'm going to show you a little scene I did here, which is... Um, it started off in Unreal Engine because um, I really wanted to learn Unreal for ages. And last year, I took the opportunity to, to do some online courses. And one of my online courses was just to create a very, very simple scene, which we have here in Unreal. So if I, if I show you, it's, it's got a few, a few rocks, it's got some, some landscape and um, those assets are from, from Megascans just dropped in. And um, I tried to give it a very moody kind of, just trying to play with, with, with settings in Unreal to, to make it look interesting. And then when I heard about the, the community challenge, I thought, oh, I've got this scene in Unreal already. So I really want to see if that works in Omniverse, because there are certain things that I like about Omniverse, which is, you know, it's, it feels really accessible and I can build something really quickly and change things really quickly. And um, Unreal Engine is still quite a, you know, a big thing, which is, you know, you have to be very careful how you set everything up and I'm not that experienced in it. So I just wanted to get everything over and then see how that goes. And um, so what you need to do, um, just show you my my launcher here and the Omnibus launcher. It's got connectors here, which one of them is the Unreal Engine um, connector. And um, so if you install that, then in your Unreal Engine um, window, you can see the Omniverse tab here up here. And um, you can say Add Server, which then puts um, your Omniverse folder here. And um, the easiest bit that <laughs> you need to do is just click Export Level to Omniverse, which then takes your whole scene and creates a USD file that you can then open in, in Omniverse. So um, that's what I did. I think you can also export um, things individually just by right clicking and then say export to Omniverse, which takes your assets separately. But, um, you know, for this exercise, I literally just went export level to Omniverse. You have to say export y axis, um, say OK, and then just find your Omniverse folder, local host, and um, you know, I've got my project folder here and it will just export into here. So if I just cancel that, I jump into Omniverse um, USD Composer, formerly known as Create. And um, I've got my my Omniverse um, folder here that I've just um, exported this to. And it will come in just like as little, this little icon which I can open and you can see that a few things um, are changed and um, I just want to show you how to how to fix these real quick. So first thing is I really want to have an environment and some sky so I can just drop that here. Just move it a bit. And then um, I click on it this but in the environment tab that now has opened here i can just make the dome light maybe a teeny tiny bit lighter so you can see and then on environment 
you have the opportunity to rotate your sky around. And also further down here, you can change the time of day. So you can, you know, choose something to your liking. So if I want to have this kind of morning appeal here, um, I just, I've got actually my cameras from Unreal imported as well. So just to a set for, but also can try and find a new, a new view that I like. And then, you know, you can say create from you here and that gives you a new camera in Omniverse. And then um, what I like to do with such big scenes is to um, go into the render settings and under common there is some um, global volumetric effect, which then gives your scene a nice, nice depth. And you can see that the material on these rocks isn't quite right. So I can just go to this rock, for example, and I right click on the material down here and say copy. And this Icelandic rock material will just paste onto here. So that was a, a quick fix for what this. And um yeah, it's 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 just really fun to to get a scene. And you know, it looked a bit different in, in Unreal, but now I can actually fine-tune it. I can and change the light colors. I can, you know, play with loads of different settings. And I show you. Um... So like, every time I tried something, it kind of turned out slightly different. And on here, I've also um, added an animation. Let's see if I can show you the timeline on that. I don't know, it's a bit blurry. But it's this is literally what um what I did to what I used to render out my little movie that I showed you earlier. Which is this one. And it you know, it renders it out in such a quick time. The idea is commenting how awesome that dust is. Very cool effect. <laughs> Yeah, it looks very wind blown. <laughs> so yeah. Very, very, very cool. Um, and so Zia has a great question that Tanya, you'd probably be great at since you are relatively new to the Omniverse ecosystem. What uh, What do you recommend for people to get started? What do you think is the, the best way to kind of dive in? Um, well, there are a few tutorials, um, you know, on the Omniverse website. And um, I was lucky because um, I got a whole bunch of links um, sent to me in the very beginning, which I went through. And actually this, um, the, the, the way of exporting from Unreal Engine into Omniverse, I had from um, a tutorial from Ed Studios, Ed, Edward from Ed Studios, which um, shows exactly that workflow. And it's really, really nice to follow and very straightforward. And um, so, yeah, it, that's been one of my staples to to go back to and and look at it again and again and um yeah it's um there is a lot of information out there and um you know just don't be afraid and um just try different things and and, and be creative i love it uh i will post a link to um a consolidated list of video playlists that we have um and uh, there are a couple of different places you, you can catch all these videos. One of them is the NVIDIA Omniverse YouTube channel, uh, which some people are on right now, watch this live stream. But we also have uh, NVIDIA On Demand. Uh, so if YouTube's not your thing or not available in your region, you could go to NVIDIA On Demand and we have uh, a playlist available for um, broken down by, by topic or by app. Uh, so you can find the right thing for yourself. But uh, that's great advice. I think lots of people love learning through tutorials. Tanya, thank you so much. And uh, this is also meant to be very open discussion for everybody. So if anyone wants to jump in, ask a question to anyone presenting or a suggestion or, hey, how'd you do that? Uh, or can you, can you show that a little bit more? Uh, feel free. Um, so, uh, and that, that includes you out in the audience. If you want to uh, ask us questions during the uh, during presentations, please do. 
Uh, okay, so who do we uh, have? Sorry, to... this might be getting off topic, but Go ahead. I noticed on Tanya's screen, she has an extension called AI Toy Box, and I'm curious what that is. Ooh, yes, Tanya, what is that? Oh, let's have my screen again. Just to be good, good eye, Steven. <laughs> Legalize Steven. Um, well, it was something that I got from one of the lovely community members, um, like a little link to a tutorial about... Um, just... Okay, me again. If you go again, go to... It, uh, it's called um, AI Animal Explorer. And you can create animals um, in Omniverse by, you know, creating a, um, a point cloud and then converting it to a mesh. I'm not sure if you can actually demonstrate it now, but it's, um, it's really, really cool. Okay, yeah, I think I heard about that before, but I, so, I've never tried it. Is so, it easy to use? Um, it, I followed the tutorial again, and it, it was quite very straightforward um not that i get it to work right now but you can see you now you've got you can choose a head and then you can cycle through different head shapes can you see that yeah and then you can choose um a body and wow cycle through different bodies and heads it's like creating it with like particles or something yeah so it's a point cloud that okay. then gets translated into a mesh when you say um, bake mesh. So, but obviously you can you add your your legs and your neck and your ears. Wow, that's so cool. Oh wow! I know, I know, I know. I absolutely love it. I, and, Wendy, you know, I can imagine Wendy's going to have a lot of fun with this one. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. it's almost I'm, like a cat. <laughs> I'm going to make several cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you say bake mesh. And then that Oh my gosh. So there it is. And, and someone from take... the community made this? I I I have to look up the the yeah. link, but um I think it was Sia Ideas, my my community friend who who gave me the link in the first place. It's it's a really neat little tutorial showing yeah. off how to use it and how to how because um it is somewhere like I try to I find it in the in the Omniverse launcher, and it kind of I got talked through how to how to install it after a bit of trial and error. But you can actually take that mesh and then um, export it, you know, as um, GTLF FBX. So I actually did something, and then I I went into um, into ZBrush, and then um, just yeah. retop it retopoed it and 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 used it as a starting point. I was saying that's a. I was gonna say that's a good base mesh for ZBrush. Absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm hogging the screen. Oh no 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 worries. That's awesome. But yeah. <laughs> I have to Very find cool. out who made that uh, extension and uh, look for a a message from me because uh, that is just totally cool. <laughs> So we posted a link in both chats for YouTube and Twitch, so everyone should be able to grab it from there. I will also add it to the video description for later on. Uh, a qu another quick question, Tanya from Zia. Um, I guess we just touched on it with ZBrush, but how do you prefer to do your texture texture work? Um, it depends. Um, my favorite is Substance Painter because uh, you know I can get really into detail and 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 yeah, be creative and try out loads of I, my files such as crazy sometimes because I just lay up on layer and see what it looks like and yeah I should be more technical about these things probably but um uh, yeah no it's um it's it's like photoshop but 3d it's yeah I, I do I do love it a lot and it also translates really nicely into omniverse very very cool well, thank you for that uh thanks for the great questions uh in the chats everybody all right uh tanya that was awesome um thank you we're, now we're going to move uh from uh an awesome landscape scene that tanya just showed off now we're going to take it a little higher uh, we're going to go <laughs> into the clouds with pekka varis 
and Sine Share or CineShare, as I like to say it, but both both work. We'll post a link to Pekka's uh, company uh, in a minute. Uh, Pekka, you're an Omniverse ambassador for the community because you have shown just an amazing, uh, amazing ability to kind of learn and deep dive into into whatever we put out there. Uh, I think you were one of the first people that really, I think, if I recall correctly. Our team even said that you uh, you found more bugs in uh, in the machine mode first came out than uh, than our own QA team did, <laughs> which Woo! is awesome, uh, which is <laughs> always a great way to learn the software too. Um, and yeah. so you have just hit the ground running ever since you started. I've been really really amazed as of the rest of the team about all the different work and projects you've undertaken, uh, and now setting up a full company leveraging Omniverse to create visualizations for uh, for companies uh, like the one you mentioned earlier today, that the, what you're going to show up today is related to uh, YLE, uh, which is uh, kind of like the BBC of Finland. Um, and they're doing a really cool weather project you're involved with. Um, I should mention too, you're collaborating on this project with another Omniverse ambassador, Christopher mm. Scott. Uh, Scott yeah. Actually, another one, two, two Omniverse ambassadors, Edward McEvenu from Ed Studios. Yes. Uh, who Tani mentioned a little earlier. Uh, so really cool to see the three of you. And I think you're also working with Papa Chuck in the community on, on yes, some work. So yes. really, really cool. You're, like, you're full on collaborating, um, which is one of the beautiful things of, uh, of OpenUSD and Omniverse. So uh, yeah. tell, us, uh, tell us what you're gonna show today and, and about this project. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm here with my wife and it's a bit chilly, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I try to speak loud and, and, and be clear on my words. Uh, uh, I've been I've been doing uh, so. I, I just talk about this project now because it's about this set scene and and now no no reason to open it up any further. What I've been doing with Omniverse, but <clears throat> yeah, we got this uh, crazy good gig from Nvidia. They dropped that to us basically. So this podcast guy met uh, Jamie Allen from Nvidia, and then they decided that okay, let's ask if Becca from Sunshare can do it uh, because this. Finland uh, broadcast company Yle is is uh, here very near and I can visit them and, and then they tested us and we were in the competition and Chris Scott helped us to win that competition so uh, it was some school uh, we had to compete with and uh, Chris uh, painstakingly made many Ember Gen Anvil clouds and, and other kind of uh, storm clouds with this Ember Gen simulation software so <clears throat> this was the starting point and then we got the gig <clears throat> and now we're doing this storm cloud uh, simulation thing. So we're gonna simulate and visualize uh, really, really odd phenomena inside the cloud, like how the ice crystals are grown and how they turn to crumple and how the electricity is charged inside the cloud and how the lightning is going on and how the hails are going on, stuff like that. And they are there are huge differences in the scale, and that's one challenge of this set the scene. So we have to fly to the loud and, and zoom into this nano uh, meter stuff and, and somehow try to tell that in a visual way and that's one challenge but luckily we also have a fourth member in our team called Rovan from UK he's a young guy like uh, 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 19 year old and by the way the deadline is at his birthday so it will be a good party for him I hope so <laughs> and uh, yeah well then um, well, why don't I just share? Yeah, yeah, let's, yes. let's see. Yeah, okay, so share the screen and the whole screen. And uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, I open this folder. So it all started with uh, storyboards. I met with them uh, and they told me what they want. They want basically five phenomena inside the storm cloud, and I just then listen to them and try to learn from the library books how sea salt particles are floating in the air and I draw these and I put some humidity coming up on them and sea salt particles are growing and then it's raining and so simple stuff. I just draw this and, and, and pray that it was uh, somewhere to the correct direction. And uh, Then we uh, started to gather the team and uh, I, I, by the way, I also asked Jeremy, but Jeremy Lightcap was uh, booked on other projects, so then Edward came in, and he turned out to be a perfect guy for this. He really knows how to do uh, stuff in Houdini. So we went to the Houdini to make simulations for these crazy phenomena these people were asking for. And from Edward, I got all sort of stuff. Check out, he made these particle sea salt particles in so great detail in Houdini 
and uh, he was able also to make all kind of uh, uh, simulations for these croupels and for example here we see how the croupel is growing on the humidity is uh, subcooled water is freezing on top of the ice crystal and that's a croupel it's really, wild but what it is but it is it's not a hail it's a croupel and then uh, also uh, we see here how he did the actually correct molecular structure oops it's not this one it's the next one uh, croupel growth uh, uh, yeah, you see how the croupel is growing on this ice crystal, like it's come really fat and oh, bumpy. Wow. But, uh, all, all sorts of stuff like this, but this was the one I was looking for. So this is the <laughs> this is the ice crystal growing. Uh, so it's, it's it's you know scientifically perfect. <laughs> it it goes by the rule of the of the ordering molecules in the wow. Ice. Yeah, and and we were all amazed by this. Thank you so much, Edward, for you for doing this. And this is the rain, and we're gonna use you know slow motion things. Suddenly everything turns to slow motion, and we follow one crystal floating there and stuff like that. So he did all these crazy good uh, Houdini simulations, and these are exported as alembic files. That was a new one for me, but uh, <clears throat> then I learned. So if you if you just export a static animation. Uh, uh, from uh, Houdini, you can do uh, well. I don't. Well, anyway, when you have this complicated stuff going on, uh, you you basically export them as alembic file, and, and this is, for example, how one snowflake is born. People used to think that this is a snowflake, but no, it's a flock of these. It's a one snowflake. Snowflake. And then all sort of sea salts floating around. So that was one part of the whole thing, and uh, then. The other part of this was uh, the outside of the cloud. So that was then uh, made in Composer. So I, I made... Uh, uh, I, I uh, stopped my sharing for a while so you can uh, see me when I talk here. So I, I made a new uh, software investment and I bought this Ember Gen and I learned how to use this Ember Gen just for this case. So uh, turned out that the large anvil shaped cloud is very hard to do and uh, the new Ember Gen came out and I then bought some presets from these new premium presets from Ember Gen uh, by Jung FX and uh, then I customized these uh, cumulus clouds uh, basically just to be so fat and so full of these emitters and, and so long living emitters that it came up to this animal shape. And then I uh, combined these ones with uh, another beautifully animated Cumulus BDB sequences from Pixel, Pixel Lab. And, and I bought these assets and I assembled them down there in a the root and then uh, the middle one was this huge a homemade ember gen made anvil and it came out like this so uh i'm sharing still of course so yeah you see it um i do not see uh your so screen share, share so, so yeah so let's share the whole screen once again and uh and this outside storm cloud Here it okay comes. you can see it yes I yeah, so <clears throat> these are the pixel lab stuff. So we start by floating in there as the humidity starts to form to cloud. And uh, basically we're going to make also virtual versions, uh, like VR versions of this in Unreal Engine. So this is also a, a dual track project. We make this rendering for the TV with 4K. Uh, to be shown on the huge lead walls behind those weather uh, specialists. And then we're also gonna have a virtual uh, glass version, beer glass version, real time version where people can hover around here and, and study it as they will. But that's just one machine and one one gamer PC and a set of VR glasses. So so we'll see how it scales up later. And there are some noises here. It's still a, a somehow a working project. I have two weeks to go still. And I will I will uh, make this perfect. And then I 
slowed down this whole thing with uh, Topaz Eye software that I bought because I can't make these VDP sequence which, which I bought any longer they would be played back with the jerky frame rate so I had to uh, scale up this and, and make also its slow motion with this Topaz Eye which is a very good software too so here is the top of the anvil and, and this is the storm cloud and then the lightnings are still just uh, spare lights inside you can see it if you are uh, you have a trained eye <laughs> there you go <laughs> so crazy but I will put there uh, still uh, shapes of lightning and then they said okay the colors were really uh, too much too much of artistic style so I rendered them uh, or this kind of affi or kind of realistic clouds and then I also re rendered the the ending a uh, little bit more realistic like it's not so black because they they say that it's too much like smoke and this is maybe now more like a realistic storm cloud color there yes and then uh, to finalize this thing uh, we of course have to move inside uh, Unreal Engine to make the VR version of it and uh, <clears throat> we can play this back <clears throat> these VDPs in, in real time and uh, we're gonna make 25 frames minimum second uh, 3k uh, Unreal Engine experience out of it so people really can dive into this uh, and uh, that was a rough render but uh, the really interesting part here and kind of secret part here is an uh, as you see, these are the ones uh, we bought from Pixel Lab, and they are highly optimized. They are so good in quality. I bet they are done in Houdini. But then this is the uh, anvil I made in Embergen, and uh, this is so heavy, this VDP sequence, that we have to use uh, another secret compose, uh, compressor technique here. I may signed an NDA, I can't uh, tell almost nothing. It's a beta project, but it's uh, very expensive for us to use. And it's a one month subscription, so they do everything for us in one month. But basically it cranks up the VDP and compress it in a new kind of modern way. And then uh, we can achieve very good frame rates in Unreal Engine version of this too. So this is the, the whole project. And uh, yeah, it's a collaboration of four artists and then the demanding team of Meteorologic TV stars, they are all in the TV, so they, they know what they do, and there are four of them, and, and uh, really I have to make a test to, to please them. And it's my Very pleasure. cool. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. uh, just amazing. Um, the, the lightning inside of the clouds, oh my gosh, mind blowing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be then slow motion in the end, you know, the, the whole thing, the lightning phenomenon. You get this uh, ground lights and then they meet up and then one of them is the main light, like 10,000 times brighter and the other torsos fade away. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's crazy. You get those ground canals coming, maybe 20 of them for each lightning. Very cool. I can't wait yeah, to yeah. see how this, pro how this project comes along. It's awesome. Thank you for sharing all this stuff in progress. Really, really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Well, speaking... <laughs> Speaking of really, really cool, uh, we've got Funky Boy here who has um, also prepared something, a little show and tell for us. Um, Steven, what are you about to uh, to show off here? Okay, so uh, can you see my screen now? Or where Yes, we, we can see your screen. Can we yeah. just see the, yep. is it the folder or just the picture? We're it's the folder. the folder, live stream folder. Okay, let me fix this up. From watching. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you see it now? The chat. Uh, yes. Okay. So this was a very, very simple scene I did, and it uses all NVIDIA assets. And I love to do it because, like, it's like very high quality. Each asset that you guys put in the library is very high quality. So you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a really nice render. And this is something I just started randomly doing. Um, I was following a lot of like physics tutorials and then I was like, I think Adam has a series of like 20 of them and I got through halfway and then I was like, okay, I need a break from the physics tutorial. Let's just create a Zen garden. And I put a little Easter egg in here. You can see the 
the teapot that's the the first digital asset ever created <laughs> yeah. and yeah that's just a little touch there and so i want to show a speed run of how to do these renders and um so this is the one i posted to discord and these are a few others i did just for fun to like try out and i want to show you in particular as i said before the nvidia assets and also the paint tool to make this like really nice grass carpet effect. So let's hop over into Omniverse Create, or shall I say Composer. Um, let's see. Hold up, yeah, okay, wait. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so I'm just starting from a fresh screen and most like applications and creative work is like, oh my God, it's a blank screen. It's gonna take years to get something amazing, but I'm gonna show you how to do this in like roughly five minutes. So how to get that nice grass effect is with the paint tool. And that's found at this tools menu here. Just click the paint tool and this menu will pop up right here. And you might not have anything selected, so go to the paint library and there's a nice grass preset. So click that and then it should like load up the whole grass preset. And what you can normally do is just like paint grass here and that's all fine. You can like build nice forests, you can scatter any object and it's a really good tool to use. But what I like to do is with this flood button right here, you just click the flood button and it's gonna say, okay, there's gonna be a lot of assets that load in, do you wanna continue? And then just press yes. And it can take a lot of time depending on the asset, but here it's pretty quick. Wow. And what, about, what I love about the paint tool is that it's really memory efficient. So the computer only thinks it's rendering like one blade of grass or like two blades of grass, but it's instancing like thousands or hundreds of thousands. So this is gonna create a nice geometry effect when we put the assets in. And one thing I quickly learned is this grass looks, you know, a little yellow, a little dead. So you can quickly find the two materials of the grass and go to color tint and then just make it a little greener, just a little. Okay, so now I'm just going to load in some assets and do some basic layout work. So you go to the assets tab at the bottom here. And I really love the vegetation one and the residential one. So I'm just going to load in a couple tree assets. And I'm just going to drag them all. To, oh, that, that one's a little big. Maybe not this one. <laughs> um, I'm just going to drag in a couple of trees and then an asset. And I'm going to light it up, and it should look pretty good. And maybe this one. And so now I'm just going to select. Oops. I'm just going to select each of them and move them just a bit around. Yeah, uh, yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to go to the residential tab. And you'll see how qu high quality these assets are right here. So I'm going to drag in, especially this, uh, this one called Armento Rider. OK. So I dragged it in, and it's like a little tiny sculpture right here, right? You can barely see it. Oh, it's just, a, but you can really scale these to like amazing, like scale it up and it still maintains a lot of detail. So that's a still a pretty nicely detailed statue, even though I maybe scale it up 10 times. And so I'll put the statue in, I'll maybe like copy it to give him some buddies. And then I'll just frame a shot really quickly. Like that's looking good. And so I'm gonna do I'm gonna go for a nighttime lighting, so it's not gonna matter that there's all this space here. And the default lighting that comes in Create is really nice because it will show you everything. But once you have a scene set up, you can uh, just mute it out and we'll start from a fresh light source. And I'm just gonna create a camera right here. And then I'm going to create a light. I really like the sphere lights and rectangle lights. I'm going to go for a basic rectangle light here. I'm going to rotate it so it's just pointing at the ground. And I'm going to scale it up. And then I'm also going to copy. I'm just moving it where I like. 
I'm gonna kind of imitate some uh, some moonlight here. So I'm gonna make the light slightly blue. And keep in mind that we're still in real time, uh, the real time rendering engine. So it's gonna look much better when we switch to path tracing. So yeah, that looks about good. Maybe tone it down just a bit. And so now I'm going to switch to the interactive path tracing mode, and it looks like way, way better. Uh, I'm just going to focus in on a little guy here to add some depth of field. So I just use the focus selector, and I'm going to select a really sh uh, shallow f-stop of 0 0.5. And then Tanya already mentioned this in her thing, but what adds a lot of atmosphere very quickly is this uh, global volumetrics tab. So if you click that, the fog will come in and you can crank it up like crazy. And it takes a little time for the render to get used to it, but it adds a lot of nice effects. And that's about it that I'd have to show you. So I'd call this scene like, it's not perfect, but it's 80% there to a point where you could really change the lighting up to how you want it. Uh, add assets where you see fit, but this is where I'd say you know you're eighty percent there, and it's it's just the fun part that remains. So that's that's like all I have to show. I don't know. Are that looked pretty fun wow. to me. That part that was pretty cool, and the uh, the mood you you've set up with the lighting is awesome. You have uh, you have a gift for lighting, Mr. Tong. Yeah. Uh, and, and any questions on that? I don't see any questions from the community yet. Uh, but I just a lot hear of comments. A lot of jaws, yeah, <laughs> a lot of dropped jaws. Yeah, Very so cool. yeah, I, I just encourage you, you guys at Nvidia, especially, like put in more assets every now and then. You know, it's it's a really nice treat for us. It's all good to have a multi-user workflow, but when you have like all these nice assets to pick from, it's it really makes it easier to work with. That's great, and thank you for walking everybody through on how to grab those awesome assets uh, and place them in the scene so easily. It's going to be a great reference for uh, for new and old users alike. So thank you, Stephen. Um, and now, uh, uh, perhaps one of my favorite members, uh, especially because of his com uh, contribution to the community challenges, Shang Chi, otherwise known as Frank Shang, is with us. And is, Zia actually noted earlier before that um, that that the desk that's behind Frank, all those uh, art assets were, were were they all modeled by you, Frank? Yes. <laughs> you you are in your own virtual world there. Um, a very cool desk. That uh, that is a desk I would love to have. Um, and you actually, uh, so you've been participating in all the community challenge. Our our marketing uh, guru here, Greer, loves each of your work. Uh, she's always uh, always smiling whenever you do something. So thanks for sharing all that stuff. What did you uh, what did you work on today? It's uh, kind of taken from a movie some people might recognize or a book. <laughs> when the challenge came about, I had a friend that visited the, the Shire in New Zealand. So that popped in my head about, oh, that would be fun to do. Then I researched more and I realized the whole movie was made in New Zealand. So that got me going about getting everything that I need. And I'll, I'll show you the, um, the video first. Let's see. I love hearing how people are inspired. Um... Everyone see my screen? Uh, I don't see it yet. sharing uh, through Discord yet. Sometimes Discord makes you do it a couple times, so take your time. We're doing actually, <laughs> we're doing great on time. So thanks for everybody for uh, for being so well prepared today. Um, feel free to post any questions you've got in the chat, and I think the stream's coming up now. They coming up now? It's Can loading. It's thinking about oh, it. Like, almost, <laughs> I see it. It's definitely thinking about it. Discord's got those little two, two squares bouncing around. It's so like what happens, I would tr maybe uh, stop the stream and then start it again and see if that helps. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it it was working fault? earlier. It, he shared his screen and we were like, what? <laughs> so Frank, at the bottom left, if you go ahead and uh, click on the little uh, stop streaming button, um, it'll stop your present stream, and then you could uh, try again with a new one. And while we're waiting, so anyone um, who's watching, uh, the, the Set to Scene Challenge is very much uh, in effect right now. Uh, I posted the link a little earlier from the forums. Um, let's see if this screen share is working. There you go. There it is. Yep.
Look at that reveal. Wow. Very familiar scene. Wild. <laughs> oh, my favorite. Oh no, part. he sees us. <laughs> That is awesome. Whoa. Very, that very was cool. awesome. And Frank this Frank shared this earlier in the community challenges uh, channel on our Discord server. So feel free to go there and you can play the video and he's got sound in the video actually. I don't know if sound came through for everybody here, but there it was definitely a nice uh, nice familiar soundtrack behind that. So Frank, how how do you do all this stuff? Do you were you working with Peter Jackson on this? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm going to share my screen again. You may have, yeah, yeah, there you go. You have to click, you have to stop the current one and start again. Okay. All right. Yep, we're up, we're good. Yeah, this, um, I started with this and I picked the outer gate because it was more um, the dark side and I like the night and the dark side of things. Um, I used a Blender OSM and Sketchfab, SketchUp and USD Composer and Camtasia for the video editing. Um, within Blender OSM, um, I'm able to use OSM and it'll take me into the box map, a map box, where I could download the Mount Nagaru uh, in New Zealand where the film was, you know, was filmed with the 3D terrain of the, uh, of the, uh, of the volcano. Um, and once I brought it back into uh, Blender, I have this 3D terrain all mapped already, and then I just save it out as a USD or a FBX. Um, and then I also went into the Hawaii Maka Valley where there were steep terrains where I needed to be on either side of the gate. Um, from there, um, I brought into um, Omniverse and I might be able to change the, the terrain that looks more like Lord of the Rings. Um, and here's a video of how I did that. I just select the terrain and select the material and replace it with the dirt standard uh, MTL from NVIDIA. And then I made it stronger so it shows up. And I edit the, the, um, the, the, uh, the scale to where I thought it was appropriate. And you can change any scale you want and change, you know, the, 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 um, the, um, the ratio of it too, to make it look whatever you like to see. And I instantly have the terrain. And then I also went in and changed the color of it. Just a minor adjustment. That made it look like, the, you know, um, the, the battle of the gates. And then I changed the lighting and I have this terrain already set and done. Looks so good. And then once I did that, I start, I went into Sketchfab and I collected all the assets that I felt that I was going to use in my scene. And it's all right here, library. And then once I have that, um, I started to compose in uh, uh, Omniverse. I first started the scene, have all the uh, Gandalf's army in a circle. And that was one USD file. Then I also create another USD file of Mordor's army. Um, like that. And then I went to SketchUp and I built a gate. Uh, and then I brought into Omniverse and I mapped the materials, again, using the dirt um, texture. Um, and then I composed everything in USD Composer. Because each one was a file and it was easy just to compose it all together. Um, and then here's some more scenes that came out of the same scene that I was creating. And then here's a view of the um, um, create where I have to file the gate. You know, these are multiple final scenes that I compose together. Then I have Gandor's uh, uh, scene here, the closer mountains right here on these two, and then uh, uh, Mortar's Army on here. And then I compose it all in uh, uh, Camtasia, with, where each of the export each other videos and still images, and then I also cut the sound 
from a movie and I splice it all in to create the movie that I did. It's really simple to do. Um, all the software I used was free. Um, nothing you have to buy. Um, just have to be creative in how you want to use it and compose your scene. Um, it was um, it, it was kind of hard to follow the Lord of the Ring exactly um, because you know it's matching a movie is much harder than creating your own scene from design. That's what I learned um, because you know you want to create the right texture, the right color to match the movie. Um, you can get close to it, but um, you have to keep trying. Um, and it worked real well. I mean, I thought it was kind of fun doing this, and it came together fairly quickly. Um, I was surprised, and um, and I generated the movie the last 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 you know, the last at the end. Very cool, Frank. Well, we got a, a good question from Zia. Uh, he's asking, what was the hardest part of that? You just said you, uh, it was easier than thought it was going to be, but what was the most challenging? You think? Hardest part was getting the light, the night, evening. Uh, backgrounds to get that dark, dark um, uh, feel in the movie. Um, you know, the, the music, if you watch it, turn up the sound because it makes a huge difference. Um, sound also makes that feel. And so you combine that together, that was the hardest. And also matching the sound with the movie, how the gate was opening and transition to the next part of the gate opening with you know the army. Um, that was difficult. That was you have to really be careful with sliding the act together overall to get the blend just working right. But Very the background cool. and the mountains and all that was really simple to do. I mean, you could you know in the um, uh, Blender OSM it's free. Um, you get a Mapbox account and you tie it all together, and you can download any terrain in the world and use it. And you can also change scale in Omniverse to get it to the terrain that you want without modeling. <laughs> Very cool. All right, sorry, I had to, I can't type and talk at the same time. I was pasting the link to Discord. So, because uh, Frank's video with the sound is in the Community Challenges channel on our Discord server. So feel free to come check out the uh, the Discord server at discord.gg slash NVIDIA Omniverse. Pretty easy to remember. Um, and now uh, Zia is is uh, awaiting. What is, what is your what's your, what's your next project you're gonna work on next? Do you have something lined up, Frank? I usually follow the challenge. Um, the challenge is awesome. provides me with a project at the same time about things that I want to learn in Omniverse. Now I, I don't have to create a subject or think of what I'm gonna do. Edmar does that for me. <laughs> <laughs> well. To, to be fair, it's really Greer, Greer is uh, Greer and Tim Funkhauser have been collaborating very closely from our marketing team, uh, and uh, I, I'm always try to get her to come on the stream because I think she'd be a wonderful guest, and she could speak to uh, how she comes up with some of these great things. Um, so uh, maybe uh, maybe we'll put together a, a move on petition and uh, and get a lot of signatures <laughs> and have her ever come on. Um, we have another question that is uh, for for uh, Funky Boy. Um, uh, Stephen, how do you go about choosing your projects, um, and how do you um, how do you learn? Um, I have to say, also, Stephen, like I've noticed, you explain things so well, and you put a lot of thought into your presentation. So you're you're an awesome teacher. Um, so how does someone like you? How do you find? Uh, how do you teach yourself? How do you? What's most helpful? Uh, yeah, like Frank said, a lot of it is you know the challenges. Like when you guys did, I did the machinima one, and then you guys did a coding challenge i was like okay i guess I'll, I'll learn some coding um also you know sometimes it's just browsing other omniverses people's channels like i was watching um eric strainflow's channel and he had a thing about importing legos i was like importing legos in omniverse let me let me try that you know so it's pretty serendipity and uh was there another follow-up to that question uh how do you go about choosing your projects and how do you go about learning? Yeah, um, I definitely follow like every everyone who has like an Omniverse channel. You got you got to follow that. You got to go on Discord and also keep. Yeah, definitely like what Tanya was doing and uh, what Frank was doing. There's other software worlds. So like the world of Blender, you can learn so much about just lighting from those guys, textures from those guys and Unreal is a, very, a free tool. It's something I learned last summer, but I think I'll go back to it. But there's a whole world of uh, 
tutorial makers for Unreal 2. So just like go into different worlds, I guess, uh, but also just stay within the Omniverse. <laughs> Very cool. And, you know, we actually started uh, a relatively new uh, channel on Discord called Show Your Work, um, which is pretty cool because the layout, once you go on the channel, is automatically defaults to a presentation mode. So you can see everybody's kind of uh, renders there and you can discuss it in its own thread. So that is uh, super inspiring. Uh, whenever someone posts there, I'm always uh, quick to share it with other folks here because I think it's super inspiring to see all the creators work. Um, I can't tell you how, how happy we are that each of you came here. Tanya thought she was going to have to leave early. She was so, so uh, impressed that she couldn't leave. <laughs> I was mesmerized. You, you had me on the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I really appreciate everybody's time and thought and energy and, and your passion for Omniverse and OpenUSD. Um, it really is truly inspiring, not only to other creators and developers in the community, but also to the NVIDIA team ourselves. Uh, so thank you so much for, and uh, keep being you, uh, let us know if you're in the community, you're watching this and you're inspired by one of these folks, uh, feel free to come and ask questions on the discord server. Uh, and we're happy to help you, uh, find what you need to get going. Um, there's a pretty nice update coming in the near future, very near future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the team's been working hard on that. And, uh, I think the, uh, the unreal connector was just updated yesterday. Uh, to support the latest version of Unreal. So um, I know it's been a uh, um, uh, topic uh, in the Unreal channel on our Discord server, so check that out. Um, Pekka, Tanya, Frank, and Steven, thank you so much for coming on today. Wendy, thank you for, uh, for uh, your awesome energy and, and expertise <laughs> in hosting these live streams uh, and getting the audio back working up again. Thank you to everybody watching. Um, I posted the uh, the upcoming live streams uh, upcoming live streams calendar so you can uh, check out what's coming up next. Uh, Stephen just mentioned a minute ago Eric's live stream. That's the next one happening tomorrow. I believe Ashley's was a little bit earlier today. Her her live streams are awesome too. It's all they're all on our, our YouTube channel. Just go to the live section. You can check out each of the developers' live streams. Uh, Isaac has one every Tuesday. Um, cool stuff happening there as, as well in robotics. So um, really happy to have everyone here today. And uh, everyone has a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow for, for Strain Flow's live stream. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.